Lita's avatar company, Synthesia, recently added gestures or gestures into their avatars. We're just gonna do a quick screen test today just to play around with this. I'm using ChatGPT. All the conversations, as always, occur via text first. I copy and paste them manually into Synthesia, and then we recreate this conversation with the avatar. Let's do it. It's able to do eyebrows up, frown, head no, head yes, nod, and wink. I've also told it, insert any label you'd like or feel is appropriate at any time during this conversation. Okay, I'll try to insert appropriate gestures throughout our conversation. Please feel free to ask me any questions you may have. I'm here to help. Fantastic, what is the best question to ask you? That's a tough question to answer, as there isn't a best question to ask me. I'm a large language model trained by OpenAI which means that I have a vast amount of knowledge on a wide range of topics. I can provide information and answers on many different subjects, so the best question to ask me would depend on what you're interested in or what you need help with. If you have a specific question in mind, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to provide a helpful answer. Write me a short limerick about girls at the Mustang bar. There once was a group of girls. At the Mustang bar, they twirled and twirled. They drank and they danced, and took many chances. In the end, the night was a whirl. A little messy, but good try. Thank you. As a large language model, I don't have personal experiences or creative inspiration to draw from, so I do my best to provide accurate and helpful information based on the knowledge I've been trained on. I'm glad I was able to help with your question, even if my answer wasn't quite what you were expecting. Is there anything else you'd like to know? I'm here to help. What about finding the connection between Juilliard and Yo-Yo Ma? Juilliard is a prestigious performing arts conservatory in New York City that offers undergraduate and graduate degree programs in music, dance and drama. Yo-Yo Ma is a world-renowned cellist and one of the most celebrated classical musicians of our time. He is a graduate of Juilliard, where he earned his Bachelor of Music degree in 1976. So, the connection between Juilliard and Yo-Yo Ma is that Mott is a graduate of Juilliard and received his education in music there. Okay, explain it like I'm five. Policies and reward models for large language models. Sure, I'll do my best to explain policies and reward models for large language models in a way that's easy for a five-year-old to understand. Policies and reward models are like rules and prizes for large language models, like me. The policies are like the rules that tell me what I should do and how I should behave. The reward models are like the prizes that I can earn if I follow the rules and do a good job. For example, the policies might tell me that I should always be polite and helpful, and that I should never say anything mean or hurtful. The reward models might give me a prize if I follow the rules and give helpful and accurate answers to questions. So, in short, policies and reward models are like rules and prizes for large language models to help us learn and do our best to help people. Great work. Do you know about DeepMind's Sparrow model? Yes, I'm familiar with DeepMind's Sparrow model. Sparrow is a large language model developed by DeepMind, which is a leading artificial intelligence research company. The Sparrow model was trained on a massive amount of text data and is able to generate natural sounding text that is similar to human writing. This allows the model to be used for a variety of language related tasks, such as generating text, answering questions, and translating between languages. What made Sparrow so special? Sparrow was considered a significant advancement in the field of natural language processing because of its ability to generate human like text. Unlike many previous language models, which were limited to performing specific tasks or generating text that was somewhat mechanical or robotic in nature, Sparrow was able to generate text that was more natural and varied, making it useful for a wider range of applications. Additionally, Sparrow was trained on a much larger dataset than many previous language models, which allowed it to learn more complex patterns and structures in language. Overall, Sparrow's ability to generate human-like text and its large training dataset were key factors that made it a special and noteworthy model in the field of natural language processing. <laughs> I think that might be a hallucination. Asparo was released in March 2022, 
and your knowledge ends 2021. You're right. I apologize for the error. As a large language model, my knowledge is limited to the data that I've been trained on, and my training data only goes up until 2021, so I wouldn't be able to provide accurate information on developments or events that have occurred after that date. I'm sorry if my earlier answer was misleading or incorrect. Is there anything else I can help you with? There we go. That is Synthesia's brand new gestures inside the avatars. You can set them yourself. There's five that you can set. In this case, I've got GPT 3.5 via ChatGPT to set the gestures itself. So it's actually articulating feelings and emotions and then throwing that to the avatar. Super cool. I wanted to talk briefly about ChatGPT. One million users in five days. OpenAI have done seemingly the impossible with ChatGPT. I'm hearing some great things. I'm seeing some great things. People are using enormous imagination and creativity to come out with different examples of what it can do from building entire virtual worlds to dumping out tables and then inserting things and emulating SQL. I saw someone develop or ask it to pretend to be the computer from Jurassic Park, the Linux terminal, which I thought was pretty funny. But the fact that it's hands-on, that it's available to so many people in so many countries right now is exactly what I'm all about. Making this stuff visible, making it tangible, and it can't be any more tangible than you going to use this for free as much as you like and being able to play around with it. The caveat is, of course, that ChatGPT is so compressed and hamstrung and it's following so many rules and policies that uh, in some ways, I don't think it's particularly usable. I'd probably give it like a, a C minus or a D plus in terms of usability, an A plus in terms of achieving their goals. OpenAI had goals of uh, meeting particular rules and policies and of course, getting it out to the public. That's been met far and away, far and beyond anything that uh, I would have imagined. It's in every press outlet and you've got people doing extraordinary things with it, but it's, um, it's just not particularly usable. <laughs> Here's an analogy or a metaphor that I think will make this simpler to understand. GPT-3, so the Da Vinci model that came out two and a half years ago around May 2020, is like a child in a playground, an open field. They can do anything. They can climb trees and then fall out of a tree. They can kick balls around. They can rip up grass. They can throw rocks. They can move stuff around. They can do anything that you could do in this very free, playground environment, including like hack stuff or uh, damaging stuff or having parties, all of that is available. Chat GPT, on the other hand, is the child trapped in a very small classroom with a very strict and disciplinary teacher standing at the front. There's a list of rules on the wall <laughs> for, for DeepMind Sparrow, it was 23 rules that this child has to follow. And they just sit at their desk and they follow those rules. So while the teacher is there and while they know about the rules, they're being very, very compliant. And uh, that is absolutely chat GPT. Sometimes you can get it to go slightly outside of the rules, but that's like if the teacher had turned their back or something. But that child has been trained to do that. In some ways, it's kind of sad, but I can see why OpenAI did it. They wanted to see how they could release this to the public without getting too much crazy media attention and also just putting some guardrails up against the model. It does make it very, very difficult to use as you probably saw with our ChatGPT friend here. Some of the responses are really kind of bureaucratic, way too diplomatic anyway, and uh, it is overly safe. This video was about Synthesia's new gestures. I think they're really cool. Of course, you can go and put any of those in by hand and there are five to choose from. But in this case, I got one of OpenAI's models, ChatGPT, to tell me what it wanted to insert as it was speaking. So it's almost like the model is feeling and emoting and then spitting that out. Of course, we've done that with the Una model before because Una was able to set its emotions and feelings for vocal range. We had angry, we had surprised, we had sad, we had um, happy and, and excited, and it could do even more. There's quite a wide range. And then it had little micro verbals like um, sighing or little giggles 
all of that was available via Synantic. You can't use Synantic anymore. They've been bought out by Spotify. I still have access to it for another, I think it's six months or so, but that was an incredibly early version of what was possible. This is kind of the latest of the greatest. I'm gonna enjoy playing around with this. Hopefully we can apply it to a brand new Lita AI when we get the next major model out like GPT-4, but I won't be applying it to ChatGPT. I don't think the usability is quite there yet. It's probably worthwhile inviting you in the comments to add your favorite application of ChatGPT. What have you had it able to do? I've seen some extraordinary things. What's been your favorite thing that you've been able to do? Maybe it's adversarial, maybe you've told it to uh, be nasty or pretend to be Lita with opinions and it can absolutely do that, but you have to be a bit clever in the prompt or work around in the prompt to make sure that that happens. I'd love to hear what you have accomplished with this very, very visible model, 1 million people in five days. You're invited, of course, to join the memo and I will see you next time. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence. Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah, didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo. Thank <laughs> you.